Um, so there's a desire to have a better understanding of phenomena more than a narrative account of one's experience of that phenomena. And I drew this picture before. Um, I said, imagine that there's this phenomena in phenomenological research, and you have multiple individuals experiencing that phenomena, right? So this is experience. And obviously, because I have multiple individuals experiencing that phenomena, then I'm going to have, from that experience, that's going to yield multiple interpretations of the phenomena, right? Multiple interpretations. But not only multiple interpretations, we saw earlier that it's also going to obviously lead to multiple descriptions. As a researcher, what we need to do is identify whether or not the phenomena is the type of the phenomena where we should only have descriptive accounts, or is it the type of phenomena where I can put some interpretation into it. My interpret and the example that I gave in the last segment was of um, parents who had, who'd lost their child. Right? If if that's the type of phenomenological research that you're doing, and you yourself haven't lost any children, it would be it would be it would be in poor form to try and do interpretations of, at least my account is. I, I, you might be able to do this, but I, 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 you know, I would so strongly uh, caution against it, right? Um, it, it would be in poor form to try and interpret the experience of the loss of a child having not lost a child. So then a, just a pure description, uh, description would suffice, right? You know, an explanation of how it happened, what were the events, how did the family cope, and then you would have more of a sort of coping mechanism uh, because of said phenomena. That might be a consequence of the, the, the research. If, however, you are the type, and this is just an example, right? If, however, you are uh, an individual who has, in this sense, lost um, a child, God forbid you always say that, right? You have lost a child and you know about the experience, then you going through this research design might help you better understand your loss and your grief and talking to other individuals might allow you to better interpret or reinterpret your own um, relationship to the phenomena, right? And as we said, and I think I'm going to talk about this in a second, as we said, we always want to, in doing phenomenological research, bracket our own bias, our own interpretation, our own preconceptions um, from the very beginning of the research so that the reader knows, here's Jason's particular, here, here's, his, here's his interpretation on things. And we'll see whether or not he holds true to um, being as objective as possible, if the research calls for objectivity. All right. Um, so hopefully that's a clear distinction between narrative and phenomenological uh, research. Okay. And the blue doesn't erase really well. I might switch to black. Okay. Um, the next point, we're still on bullet point one, um, which is identification of common or shared experience in phenomenological research. This is going to be uh, 1B. 1B. Um, the researcher hopes to better understand Z, whatever Z is, right? The researcher hopes, so here's the researcher. A researcher wants to have a better understanding of Z, the phenomenon, whatever that is more than subjects A, B, C, D interpretation of Z. So, so we have the interpretation the interpretation of Z as conveyed via the participant, the subjects. Um, what we recognize is that the subjects uh, description, descriptive account of their experience of Z is what I use as a researcher to better understand Z. So for phenomenological research, and I'll read the, 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 the bullet point again, the researcher hopes to better understand Z, the phenomena, more than the subject's interpretation of Z. So emphasis is placed on understanding the phenomena, the experience of Z, whatever Z is, more so than the interpretation that each individual had. What I recognize in doing phenomenological research is that I can't get to an understanding of Z without having the participants offer their experience of it. 
Um, the one thing that I can say is, and this is the one slight caveat, and I know this for a fact because I did the research myself, is that even if the participants, when you have multiple participants, in some instances, like I said before, my research design was in part phenomenological, um, and I did in part a phenomenological, a phenomenological account of Holocaust survivors' um, understanding of evil um, based in their experience of concentration camps or the Holocaust. Most of them were in concentration camps, some weren't. Um, what I thought is that I would have an understanding of evil, right? What I was trying to analyze was evil, and the way that I was going to get to an analysis of evil was through this interpretive, descriptive account from participants. What I ended up realizing and recognizing is that, to be honest with you, I, it, it muddied my understanding of evil even more because every single participant, much to my surprise, said, you, you're just never going to get it, right? And they didn't talk to each other. Right? So it wasn't coincidental that they all said, and I asked them a specific question to elicit this type of response. Um, they were like, you know, Jason, you can try, and we wish you the best of luck, but in reality, until you experience something of this horrific nature, I can talk till I'm blue in the face. You're just not going to, you're not going to get it. So, you know, which, which helped me, it really did help me understand evil more. It, didn't, it wasn't that I could say that evil is this, or even that evil exists as such, but what I was able to say is that um, in an attempt, roughly, you know, in an attempt to attempt to understand evil, one has to recognize that the phenomenological experience of evil, if there is such a thing as evil, um, weighs heavily into an interpretive account. Where individuals have experienced evil, their interpretations have um, greater significance for them and their community than for individuals who have not experienced that magnitude of, you know, dismay, destruction, whatever. Uh, and I didn't think I was going to arrive at that conclusion from the beginning. I thought, no, I'm going to have a better understanding of what evil is and it'll be something. But, you know, the research never lends itself um, to that direction. So the reason it's important to recognize this, especially for young researchers, and a lot of the people, the majority of people that watch my videos are young graduate students. Thank you for watching. Um, so when you're doing your, your master's thesis, when you're doing your PhD dissertation, keep in mind, if you choose to do a phenomenological study, that the descriptive accounts that the participants are giving you are important, but they're important insofar as they offer a greater insight. They offer a new mode of understanding into the phenomena that you're interested in, into the phenomena that's directing or, or, or shaping your research. That's what's important, the phenomena itself, right? If you're doing narrative research, it's a different story, and I just discussed that. Okay, next bullet point, 1C. Um, their interpretation, that is, their being the participants' interpretation of Z, is necessary for a better understanding of the essence of Z. And with respect to essence, we recognize in phenomenology, this, in this sort of phenomenological research, essence, the term essence is a technical term, essence is, equals textual, T-E-X-T-U-R, textual description, plus structural description. Textual description is what happened, and structural description is how. H, if I could write it right. How. Right? What was your experience? How did that experience impact your life? Right? Two different types of question, but the essence of the phenomena, whatever that phenomena might be, is a combination of a textual and a structural uh, description. Okay, so we understand we understand uh, that, and I'll read it again. The interpretation of Z is necessary, right? You need an interpretation from the participants in order to have a better understanding of the essence of Z. Right? I need to understand how you felt and what you experienced in order for me to have a better understanding of the experience. 